Hi, I'm going to be doing a quick demonstration on Hibernate and how to link it up so you can get it to work for you. This is the database that we're going to be using. I'm using MySQL. This is Workbench. I have a Git Good as a database, Users as the table, and these six columns. And then we have these two records inside the table that we'll be able to see and manipulate as we run our program. Um, I'm going to be using JSF deployed on Tomcat, and uh, for those who don't know about JSF, I can I'll, I'll do a brief explanation on on how that works after we get the Hibernate thing out of the way. But uh, this is the uh, config file that helps us to know how to connect to the database itself. Uh, we have the dialect, the driver, so it knows what syntax to use. We have the database URL, we have the username, and we have the password. We also have a mapping to the HBM XML file, which links the table to our members class that we'll be using. Uh, this is the HBM XML here, and we've defined that the class is com.prt.members, and that's listed over here under com.prt package. And we've indicated that the table that this class uses is users. And how the columns are mapped up are there's the ID column for the users table and the ID variable for the members class. And I've named them the same for simplicity, but you don't have to name them the same. These just have to match up with the variables inside the members class. So these are the columns that match up with the variables accordingly and this config XML tells it how to link everything up. So it makes the connection and it knows how to connect to members. This is a, the members class that I was talking about. It's just got the various variables and getters and setters and constructors. Very simple. And then we have our hibernate util. This was generated and uh, basically it just uses the uh, config XML for hibernate to grab a session and so we can manipulate the data accordingly. Okay, This is the index XML XHTML file. This is the file that's going to be sent through uh, the faces servlet and to be built and sent back. And then this is going to be the controller that Faces servlet uses to build the index XHTML. Um, a brief overview of JSF, that's Java Server Faces. Um, in this XML file, Tomcat will be using this to know what class to use to build the dynamic page. So when this URL pattern is fed in, Tomcat reads this and says, we need faces servlet to do the work for us. It goes through the list of servlets. Right now we just have one. It's called faces servlet. These two match up, and it knows to use this faces servlet class to build the page. So it's so Tomcat feeds the index XHTML file to faces servlet. Faces servlet reads through it, parses it, builds up all HTML page and sends it back so the client can read it and display information accordingly. Um, when the project is deployed, because I've used this manage bean annotation and this name, JSF or the faces servlet knows of its existence. It knows it's there. So that way when it receives a file that has this in there, it knows, oh, I know which class that is and it's going to use this to read data and write data. When we have these variables afterwards, it's going to look for getters and setters. It looks for get username, get first name, get last name, and then when information is added, this is a text input, so when a user adds information and there's an AJAX call, the information again, the request, is sent to faces servlet and faces servlet will process it. It reads, oh, I see there's been a change. 
and then it uses the setters in this bean or controller to set the information accordingly. Also we have these listeners or these actions. When this button is submitted, this method is called. I can call this and then call this method so it knows to look for this method inside this controller and, uh, and manipulate the data accordingly. Same here, we have a method that we can call. Now this is a table and when we have a list of information fed into it, it will actually we, we can define a variable and so each row will be unique to the variable. So we have a list of members, each row is going to be one member and so we can use that member and then use the setters inside the object to load in the data accordingly and then when we click this we're actually feeding in this variable or the individual member we selected into this method so we know which one to remove. Okay, So when this program is ran we have this post construct so before the page finishes rendering we want to fulfill all the requirements inside this function. Um, so these are the methods we're going to be using, these three methods. When the page is loaded, this is called. And this is my Hibernate, UR, uh, Hibernate Util class. It's defined as helper up here. And basically all I need to do is grab the session. I open up a session and it connects to the database using this config file. And then as I call this, it's also going to be using members HBM XML. Because I'm feeding in the members class, it knows that the users table is linked up to that class. It knows the various columns of the table that are linked up to the various variables inside the class. So as I'm creating criteria, I'm basically creating a list for the table that is returned for this class mapping and then I'm defining it as a list to be read into my members variable. My members variable is just a simple list of type members, this very class. So because it's the same type, there's no error and it just grabs it all, grabs all the records and loads them in. That's all that needs. And then when we add a member, with each of these fields here, every time a user adds an information and then submits it, the AJAX call is sent to the servlet, the servlet receives it and uses the setters for all these variables they used before this is called. So the members, ob the members object is created using the constructor we open a session, begin a transaction, and all we have to do is feed in the model and it'll save that information to the database. We commit, we reset our members list and reload it so it shows the new information we've added and then we clear out all of our variables inside the index XHTML. When we remove a member, like I demonstrated, like I showed earlier, we've fed in the individual member that was clicked and it shows up here. We open a session, begin a transaction, and all we have to do is feed in the model and say delete and the helper does everything for us. We commit and then we reset our members list to show the change in records. Okay, so let's run this so we can see it in action. Okay, so these are our two records that we saw at the beginning. When I click remove, I'm going to put a breakpoint here. Now, there are two records here, so which button do we press? Only J uh, Java server faces knows. So I click this, and we see our member here that we selected. If we look at the data, we see we selected test user. has all the information listed here. We run through that and we see here it was removed. If we add a user, OK, 
Okay, and when we add member, let's put a breakpoint here. We see that the username, first name, last name, email, and password have already been set by the time this is called. So we create the members object, we start the transaction, and all we have to do is feed it in and it knows how to handle it because of our config files here. So we finish that and it shows up right here. So that's just a quick demonstration on Hibernate and how to get it to work for you.